Welcome to Beaver Creek Rotary. Luckily, it's a small crowd. You can hear me. I'd like to thank our greeters, Sandy Brewbaker and Sandy Brewbreaker. So we have we have a couple people sick, uh, out sick today. So I'd like to thank Eric Marcus for being our ticket master. Mike Zwick, Pete Bells, and Mark Weinstein for our great programs. Jim Gundel and Alex O'Hara for the website and YouTube. And of course, Pete Landrum, our Zoom guy. He did help me today. So I'd like to invite uh, Denny Jarvie up for the invocation and not Jim Brown. Hey, this work. Would you please join me in prayer? We beseech thee, our Heavenly Father, to bestow thy grace upon this meeting. As we enjoy the fellowship with one another, may we grow in stature so that we may be able to give more to our friends in Rotary and in turn give strength to the ideals of Rotary and a service to mankind. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Secretary's report, David Cusack. President Brown has a guest. I do. We have uh, Carly Lindstrom. Now, she's from Dayton Rotary. Uh, when I went and visited, she asked me to come, and she completely botched my title. So apparently, I'm the president of the Beaver Creek Chamber. So now it's my turn. So Carly Lindstrom uh, is unemployed, looking for a job. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, she's uh, she's with a sh uh, shared partner, so she deals with healthcare. So Alex, who's on Zoom, he's not here. Uh, I hope you heard that. I know you, uh, the township has changed multiple times, so uh, we'll have to connect with Carl. Thank you for coming. Jr. Jr. I have our director of development, Eric Henry, and Hi, Eric. Our, our assistant director, Jeff Ford. Jeff. Jeff. Oh, okay. uh, our attendance today is 54.9%. All right. Thank you, Dave. David Flemings. Is he here? No. Brian Lanton. <laughs> you must have missed the email. I sure did. Well, thank you very little. <laughs> okay. So our weather today, yucky, cloudy, <laughs> high 23, possible snow. <laughs> they got that right. Uh, tomorrow, high 22, sunny. And then Sunday, cloudy, high 32. Saw this on Facebook, Cedarville University students are going to attend NerdFest. No, no, just uh, kidding. The, they're going to show off their computer programming skills in the 2022 Global Game Jam. 
And so this contest is a 48 hour time limit. And they, in that 48 hours, they design and create and test a brand new video game. Do you imagine doing that in 48 hours? Uh, thousands of college students from across the globe will compete. So go Cedarville. Uh, also in the news, 800,000 Nissan SUVs have been recalled due to a safety issue. I don't know what it is. It was very technical. Um, Nottingham, England. A man was stopped, pulled over by police officers, and he had admitted to the officers that he has been driving without a license or insurance for more than 70 years. <laughs> First of all, didn't he have to go to the bathroom? Uh, you get it? Okay, sorry. Uh, so yeah, he's been driving. He'd been he admitted he's would he's been driving since he was age twelve, and he'd never been pulled over, never been in an accident, and never got insured or a license. Okay, top ten few foods to cure a hangover. Um, number ten, yogurt. Number nine, avocado toast. Ooh. And number eight, Bloody Marys. I think some of you probably tried that. Number seven, bananas. I have heard of that one. Number six, lemon water. Number five, this one's really weird, salmon. Number four, sweet potatoes. Number three, pickles. Probably not with the sweet potatoes. <laughs> that would be bad. Number two, cheeseburger. All right. And then the number one thing is eat something, anything before drinking. That'll help. It soaks it up. Yeah. Okay. In sporting news, pending uh, Beaver Creek School Board approval, the high school has announced the hiring of Marcus Colvin to be our next varsity football coach. We um, got him from CJ. He's been coaching varsity uh, football at CJ for the last 11 years. He's been named coach of the year by a few organizations. He graduated from the University of Dayton and played football there. So, uh, so we're very excited to have Coach Colvin join the Beaver Creek High School. Is it 31 after the 31 year playoff drought? The Bengals finally win their first, it was a 31 year first uh, playoff game. Since some of you were born, right? <laughs> They face uh, Kansas City in the AFC Championship game. Now think about this. The other two, so the Bengals have been to two Super Bowls, right? Do, do you know who they faced in those two Super Bowls? It was the same team, 49ers. 49ers. Everybody remembers probably the 89 game when they lost in the last minute or last, uh, yeah, second same score. Same quarterback, too. Yeah, Montana. Um, the odds are, that are all KC is favored uh, by seven. Um, and then the NFC game pits uh, the Rams versus San Francisco and the 49ers are favored by three and a half. But wouldn't that be something if the Bengals and the Niners met again in the Super Bowl? I think that would be very cool. Um, also in sporting news, I had the privilege and, and I think uh, Don, you were there last uh, Saturday, Karen. Um, the, the Beaver Creek uh, put together a team. You, you guys know the name James Turpening. Um, any, anyway, he and a couple other fellows coach a, a handicapped wheelchair basketball team. And we, we literally have enough players to have our own team. I, I think there's, there are 14 or 15 kids. And there is apparently a wheelchair league. Um, what was the sports uh, pro... Um, there's a league and, and it's sponsored by a, a adaptive sports. That's it. And, uh, th th we, we scrimmaged a team against Cincinnati. Now this team was very good. They compete statewide nationally. Uh, but I'm telling you, it, it was about one of the coolest things I've, I've had the privilege of witnessing, uh, watching these kids play, uh, play basketball. Well, there's this one kid that he was more interested in wheeling around, talking to people. Than paying attention to his 
and what was going on in the court. But he would he wheeled up and talked to the head coach of the Beaver Creek, and then he'd wheel over and talk to some students, and he was waving at everybody. So he's going to be a state rep. Yeah, he'll be a state rep. <laughs> he'll be a politician, but yeah, and he did. He did want to be. He wanted to be an announcer. The announcer. He kept saying, "I want to announce." I want. So we let him. He he announced some stuff. It was fun. Uh, but that was that was really really cool. So hopefully we can we can develop maybe a, a, a citywide or, or regional team and and because there's there's a regional team in Cleveland and then the one out of Cincinnati that has multiple schools. And the kids are ages uh, what was it first grade, first or second grade through twelfth grade. Uh, so that's who competes. Boys and girls on the same team playing. Um, and, and that Cincinnati team was great. They were very gracious towards the end of the game. Um, they kept, they would give the ball back to us after a rebound, let, let one of our kids shoot the ball again. Um, and just to see the grins when, when one of those kids made a basket, I was just, that was tremendous, really a lot of fun. Okay. Okay. On this day in history, um, most of us remember 1986. That's the space shuttle, uh, challenger disaster that occurred. Uh, now, very few of you will remember this. 1901, uh, based the American League was founded in Chicago. So you had these following teams, the Baltimore Orioles, the Boston Americans, the Chicago White Stockings, the Cleveland Blues, they were called, Detroit Tigers, Milwaukee Brewers, Philadelphia Athletics, and the Washington Senators in 1901. In 1985, a bunch of uh, music uh, and singers, professionals gathered around to record We Are the World. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. uh, in 1973, on this day, the Vietnam War, uh, a ceasefire went into effect. Uh, some famous birthdays, I couldn't find very many. Uh, in, in 1955, Nicolas Sarko Sarkozy, he's the current president of France. In 1457, you have to go back a little ways, Henry, King Henry VII. Uh, but in 1936, Alan Alda celebrated a birthday. So. Okay, I have a few one-liners. There are three types of people in the world, those who can count and those who can't. <laughs> Don't you hate it when someone answers your, their own question? I do. A man walked into a bar. He was treated for minor injuries. I don't know, I'm cracking myself up, apparently. <laughs> I was addicted to the hokey pokey, but thankfully I turned myself around. <laughs> tried to, <laughs> I tried to buy some camouflage pants, but I couldn't find them. I was reading a book on anti-gravity. It was impossible to put it down. What if there were no hypothetical questions? You know, you don't need a parachute to go skydiving. However, you do need a parachute to go skydiving more than once. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, Dave's gonna be gone for a month and a half. Just warning you ahead of time. Well, probably not just me. We, we're, we're working on recruiting some others. Um, okay, so I have fines. If you like the snow, that'll be a dollar. If you've never been on Cedarville's campus, that'll be a dollar. If you own a Nissan, that'll be a dollar. If you've been to England, that'll be a dollar. Um, if you have never enjoyed a hangover, that'll be a dollar. Or suffered from one, either way. I know, that's a technicality right there. <laughs> Okay, if you're not a Bengals fan, that's a dollar. So I put my dollar in for that. And no, I'm not a Bengals fan. If you have never seen the TV show MASH, that'll be a dollar. And if you do not have your rotary pin, that'll also be a dollar. I am done with fines. I will collect and he'll collect happy bucks. Thank you, Brian. You're very little. <laughs> Uh, we actually do have a late guest, so I'm going to introduce uh, Nicole. She's with uh, Sixa, so um, 
I wrote this down. Where is it? Society of Improvement of Conditions of Stray Animals. Yes. So she's a Dayton Rotarian, lives in Beaver Creek. So I'll give you this uh, spiel that I gave last week for Adam. Uh, she doesn't know this yet, but she is a possible Beaver Creek uh, Rotary member. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next week, same time. Five dollars. Happy bucks. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw one in. Uh, my sister came in town from Tampa and we had dinner last night. So it's great seeing her. Anyone else? Hamilton last night as a teacher, and it was a wonderful production. It was really great, pleasant, just great to be out again and seeing live theater. Yeah, really absolutely. Come on, guys. I know it's snowy and cold. Come on, Shannon, what you got for me? Uh, okay. uh, so uh, last weekend was a quad night. Uh, we made pancakes and sausage for everybody. Uh, nobody froze to death. Uh, the guys had a great time. Uh, and that's my happy buck, no crossfire. All right, perfect. Did JD go on this one or is this? So you guys are still friends. Good, good. Glad to see that. Anyone else? All right. I got the winning ticket here. Wait, we have another happy buck. Oh, we do? I'm going to give a fiver. Oh, there we go. I was trying to get $5 for being late, but I wasn't. I wasn't um, <laughs> just for one, one second. So, Nicole and Tixa, we are growing our services into Green County in 2022. So, I'm looking for a host site for one of our three wellness clinics. It needs to be in a lower income area, preferably walkable distance. So, if anybody has a connection for me that I could connect with to see if we could have a free wellness appointment clinic for animals in need, please let me know. All right. We do have some county people here today, I believe, so. The development people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do when, actually, I want to say this. So her her husband actually is the pastor at Be Hope Church where we put our flags. So the worship pastor. Worship pastor. Yeah. So I was really excited to hear that. So our flags always look amazing there. Great partnership. Can I, can I give a sad buck? Uh, we don't do that here, sir. I'm just gonna do a sad buck for, for Brandon. So after all of his months of travel that you've been following, is at home with COVID. Um, he is on Zoom though, so I'll give him I'll give him that. But yes, hope you feel better, Brandon. Uh, winning ticket, last four, 9602. All right, new member. <laughs> we got the cards. Where? Okay. I'll let you know when you're all I didn't even see the thing there, so. Oh, no. Oh, no. Remember, 250 of that goes to our annual Christmas basket. So thank you. Welcome to Beaver Creek Road. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. We're going to move on here. So uh, for <laughs> some of you who are guests, uh, not this year, but next year will be our 50th uh, annual anniversary for Beaver Creek Rotary. Uh, so we do have a newer program, and it's uh, a history of Beaver Creek Rotary. So I'm going to invite Mike Swick up, who's also conveniently going to introduce our speakers. So. No, I'm not. I don't know that guy. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> I have to talk to you. <laughs> uh, I left active duty from Wright Patterson in 1984. We had lived here six years and I had no involvement with the community. And on a whim, I called the Beaver Creek Chamber of Commerce and I talked to Colonel Lynn Hollingham, who invited me in and said, I need a check for $100 so you can join. And then I'm going to send you to Colonel Wayne Spray over at Beaver Creek Rotary and you have to join there too. And that's how that all happened. Um, you know, we, we came here and just lived off the land and enjoyed the community. And I figured it was time to give something back. 
and that's how that all came about. Um, you get what you put into Rotary, and you know we've got a lot of folks here. We've got younger members, and I'm I'm committed to sharing the history of our club um, because most of you don't know it. Um, in the early days, when I first joined, we met at Beaverview Bowling Clubs in in the snack bar. You could smoke, you could drink, and you could hear pins falling the whole time. <laughs> that was that was quite a treat. That was a great place to start. Uh, I think Scott Hadley could tell you about more about the roots before that time, but um, that was that was a pretty neat place. Yeah. You want to say anything about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to ask Jack? <laughs> So uh, next time I'm gonna talk about a tale of two district governors from our club. One of them is here. Uh, Mr. Dick Gould is my good friend. I call him Mr. Speaker from like 10 years ago when I asked him to come speak. And um, he's brought the county with him. Uh, he's doing great things at the county. How, how many years have you been an elected official now? 11. 11. So I was 25 then. <laughs> so with that, I would like to invite Dick to come up and talk about this. Um, Mr. Perales is in Mexico, and uh, Mr. Kugler's wife is recovering from surgery, so that's why they're not here. Thank you. And they're just hoping I can do it on my own, which I don't know. Um, so I've also brought my development people, so we'll talk about that. But a couple of things that are uh, of big importance to Xenia, to Xenia, I'm sorry, I spent too much time there, to uh, Beaver Creek is our water treatment plant upgrade. This is uh, the biggest thing we've got going on that will affect everybody that lives in, in the Beaver Creek area. We are expanding our existing water treatment plant to provide 12 million gallons of softened water. Uh, what we are doing is a reverse osmosis system, which will, it will <clears throat> both um, purify the water, so we will actually even take out PFOS, which is in the news a lot now, and it will soften the water down to, I think they told us somewhere in the six to seven grain range, which is probably pretty close to what most people have their water softener set for. So uh, we expect that to be done by the end of 2023. And I want to point out that uh, there's two components in the water system. There's the wastewater and the water itself. And those are two separate things on your bill. And because of uh, funding, or not funding, but bonds that are falling off and the like, <clears throat> and being able to refinance, we're able to do everything we're doing here without a projected rate increase at all. So there's a thing that was put out, used to be put out by the city of Oakwood. I think someone else has taken it over, but overall costs of uh, services and Green County used to be at the top, towards the top of that. We're now well into the middle and the lower middle range on costs. So it's become cheaper, at least from a water standpoint to, to live in, in Beaver Creek and Green County. Uh, one of the things that some people probably won't like, but it's, it's again, it's a water metering system upgrade. Uh, as I think our meters are averaging 20, 20 plus years, and mostly for commercial, this will affect. But over time, meters will slow down. So you might use 500 gallons and get billed for 400. <clears throat> so we are rolling out a new metering system, which will also provide remote um, response so we don't have to have someone driving through the neighborhoods to collect the uh, data. Plus, if you start to get something abnormal in your bill, if all of a sudden you have a leaky pipe or something breaks, you will get an alert on your phone if you, if you choose, and it will tell you that you've got some abnormal usage. So again, some people may see a little bit of a bump in there because you're actually going to pay for the water that you actually use. But at the same time, you'll have access to see how much water you're using at any given time and if there's a problem. 
And again, we've started that already. And we yeah. expect, expect that to be done by the end of this year. And that also come the, the completion date involves, I think we agreed that up to three or four times we will reach out to residents to allow access to change the meters in the homes. And at, at some point it will become, the people are in the, in the fields now, the contractors. So at some point they'll have to come back to do it. So I think at, by, by the end of 2022, maybe mid 23, if you haven't replaced your meter, you'll probably start seeing a, a fee on your, on your bill. Um, we are upgrading the wastewater for Beaver Creek, Cedarville, and Sugar Creek to uh, improve reliability, extends our serviceable life by 20 years. So we're trying to do long-term plans with everything we're doing here. And uh, again, cost-effective wastewater treatment. There's a lot of EPA constant rules. So we're trying to do that to stay ahead of the curve, so to speak. Inflow and infiltration abatement. Um, this is uh, Little Miami River Conservancy really like this. This is to keep water from infiltrating the systems, uh, storm water and sewer backups and those kind of things. So we're constantly in the development stage of that to improve those items. And one of the, these are the other things I'm going to be speaking on. But before we do that, are there any questions on the, the water or wastewater? The treatment plant staying in the same location just upgraded? Just upgraded. We have the ability, I know at least on Factor Road, if I'm not mistaken, I think we have the ability that we can expand if we needed to. And some of these aren't necessarily going to be expanded. They're just, they're going to be some internal things that will allow expansion. And Sugar Creek, I think, is along 725. <coughs> Um, outside of Spring Valley, between Spring Valley and Bellbrook. And, uh, and, and then uh, the Cedarville, I believe, is the one that is on 72. That one is probably the one in most critical need of uh, changing the infrastructure. I always thought that the, the water meters were already read somewhat remotely. Maybe that's from the street. I don't it know. is. They, they drive through the streets okay. and it broadcasts. This, this is a, a higher grade technology, and I believe it works off of some kind of cellular. Okay, so you Again, can read those from the headquarters someplace. Right? Exactly. Okay. And yes, yes. And, and again, I don't want to say it's above my pay grade because I guess technically there's not supposed to be anything above it, but those are, those are for the technical people that understand what they're doing. <laughs> I talked to an engineer last year about the soft water. Mm -hmm. He said, don't. Get ready to shop yeah. Oh no, no. Well, first of all, first of all, once it's fully implemented, it'll we'll go through a process because one of the things we have to do, we, we're going to to uh, integrate it slowly because if you just go from hard water to soft water, all that lime will flush out and clog everything. So there's plans to do that gradually and to stay in touch on the bills with the bills, they'll be uh, updates, do this, do this, we're doing this, we're doing that. And again, some people may want their water softened to zero grains, and this will take it down like said, in the six to seven. And I think currently we're about 25, 26 grains. So it'll be a very significant. If nothing else, even if you keep your water softener, you'll use almost no salt at all. Anybody else? Okay, then we'll move on. The jail. <clears throat> we know we've had two levy attempts to try to find funding to pay for the jail. Both of them failed and it got closer, but um, we were not in a position where we have a choice on whether we were going to build a jail. It was just trying to find a funding mechanism for the jail. We looked at our finances and we had committed early in the year to fund a jail with a total cost of $50 million. The original projection in 2019 for the facility that we were looking at was $53 million. And that was three years ago. So some, some projected that as high as 70 million. So we looked at our internal finance um, and, and the ability to borrow 
and we've committed to borrowing $40 million as soon as possible before rates go up. Uh, we can do that and maintain our current cash flow without, provided there are no significant dips in, in revenue. Uh, that'll project us out 30 years. We hope to pay off the old one in 15 years. It'll be 30 years, but we're hoping to build a jail for 50 years. And our original thought was to use $10 million of cash that we have. So we, this year, everybody knows, but the last year, I guess, we received ARPA dollars. Uh, the American Rescue Plan dollars, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of restrictions on those, and we didn't think we would be able to use it for jails. We can, two weeks ago, the Treasury released their final regulations, and we can use it for law enforcement, uh, salaries, and the like. So what we're going to do, we don't like to call it laundering, but we are going, we have worked with the sheriff, <laughs> and we are going to fund the sheriff's office out of ARPA dollars to a tune of $10 million and then take the 10 million that we save in the general fund to apply to the, uh, the down payment for the jail. And we're working in conjunction with the sheriff's office and trying to stay out of the weeds and say, figure out what you need, what you want, prioritize what you want. This is what your budget is. And that's, that's where we're going on the jail. So we'll, we'll go through all these and we'll come back. That, that goes into the ARPA funds. The other thing we're doing with the ARPA funds, we received $33 million over two years. The first thing we committed to was to upgrade broadband. The eastern part of the county has virtually no, little or no service for, for broadband. So we committed, uh, we did an RFP and again, great, Great thanks to our de economic development people for putting it together and coordinating it. And <clears throat> we solicited bids and we got eight, seven. Uh, seven and one that came in after the radar. So yeah. And what we ultimately decided on, we scored, we had a team that scored individually and remarkably they were, they all had about the same decision. We landed on uh, Cincinnati Bell as our provider <clears throat> And we are going to spend $9.6 million for fiber to the door for an additional 9,600 homes that are either underserved or unserved in the eastern part of the county. So virtually every address in eastern Greene County will have fiber to the door. The minimum speed that they're offering is 250 megabytes per second. But because it's a public private uh, partnership, they are upgrading one tier level to anyone who lives in Greene County. And they will do this for later customers that they fill in, that they backfill. I'll get to that in a second. So the minimum speed you'll get is a half a gig speed. And the current price on that's $44.99. And so that'll be, that'll open up the whole Easter part of the county for people who work remotely. Uh, there's not, a, uh, you can go up to a, a gigabyte of speed so virtually any job that you can think of, you can work from home uh, and, and still uh, have what you need internet wise. So those are, that's essentially 20 million of our 33. The, the remainder of the ARPA funds, we are doing some, uh, we're going to fund some nonprofits. We are going to, what else am I missing here, Eric? I know we're going to do some infrastructure Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. Uh, infrastructure, the nonprofits, and then uh, I believe all of the departments kind of put a wish list together for you. Uh, and we'll see what happens. With that. Some internal internal Montgomery County things. This is once in a lifetime money. So we're trying to use it, nothing on operational. We're trying to use it on things that will carry us out longer term. Uh, we did hire Green Tree Group, which is connected with Guidehouse. And Guidehouse is the <clears throat> former consulting arm of PricewaterhouseCoopers, and they have a team in Washington, D.C. committed to ARPA funds. So we are having them vet all of our requests to see what's legal, what's not legal, because there is an audit and a clawback procedure. So if we screw up, we owe it back to them. Uh, Green Town Center, this is just something we did at our last commission meeting. Uh, we funded or the, the infrastructure for Green Town Center was funded through, rev, or through 
special assessment bonds at 8% interest. We were able to refinance those at 3.85% 3, 3 and our treasurer offered to be the, the, the uh, holder of that debt. So internally what's happened is the Greentown Center has lowered their, their, their rate by more than half and the county is able to make, if you will, 3.85% on the debt as opposed to having it go out, have issuance costs and those kind of things. So it's a win-win for the county and for the Greentown Center, which frees up cash flow, which hopefully will have them be able to continue to upgrade and hopefully pass along what's ever needed to keep that very viable. And the last uh, big one here is the Board of Elections. Who voted in 2016 or 20, 2020 and stood in line for hours or more? Um, I did, <clears throat> if you voted early. Um, what we did, we met with the Board of Elections and if you've been to the county at our main center on Ledbetter, we have what's called the media room. And what we are going to do, we are going to build a new media room in front of that facility and give that media room for early voting to the Board of Elections. So they'll have more stations to check people in, more locations to vote. Uh, part of it will be available for the 2022, this coming up election, uh, but it'll definitely be ready for 2024 for them to, uh, to get people through much faster. Plus we've been trying to work with them. They do not fall under the county commissioners. They have their own board. So we're trying to work with them to expedite people coming through the process, try to offer whatever guidance we can. So those are the big four. I'm gonna have Eric come up. Any questions on any of these? <laughs> Did you get any trickle down at all from that $1.2 trillion uh, infrastructure bill that you could use on the, on the upgrade of the, uh, uh, on, of the web stuff for the uh, Eastern part of the economy? Um, we haven't got any, any details on yeah. the money yet. Okay. The infrastructure is out there. That, that bill has passed, but it's coming to the state and they have not released any guidance on it. Okay. And my understanding is because we've already started on this, it doesn't count. Uh, that's that's a, and, and you know a lot of those bills, like the original ARPA funds, they talked about infrastructure, but they didn't allow roads and uh, highways. I understand. I understand. It was broadband and water, wastewater, water and wastewater and stormwater. So uh, you know. If there's an opportunity to swap it out, we, we try to stay on top of it. Yeah. Any other questions on any of these topics? And I'm going to turn it over to Eric, and he's going to tell you what everything is going on within our Department of Development. Well, not everything, but <laughs> uh, we uh, definitely keep some stuff confidential. Um, first, I am a member of Xenia Rotary, and I do want to say right off the top that I do appreciate that this is not a singing Rotary Club over here. I think I almost kill everyone every week when I try. So uh, just switching things up for just a second. So I have a, a four and a half year old and every day they ask a question of the day to, to the school, uh, to the classroom. And today's question was, uh, what are igloos made out of? And the children answered uh, glue, uh, paint and boxes, uh, the color pink, color purple, and then milk. So there you go. <laughs> I think we have a new sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> I can't top. Uh... <laughs> All right. So this is how our department is structured. We have community development, which does like block grants, stuff like that, and economic development. And then we also have off to the side, the CVB and airport tax report. <laughs> Some of those are. I mean, so CVB is the uh, Convention Visitors Bureau. So all the tourism that goes on in the area, they help market the county. Uh, and then they get, they get funded through uh, bed taxes at the local hotels and, and uh, motels, things of that nature. And the airport, uh, right in your, your backyard, Beaver Creek Township, we're doing great things. I'm gonna get to that in just a second, so. And those, both of those have their own boards too. We don't directly control either. Correct. Uh, so this is what the economic development side of the house does every day. So br &E visits, that's when we go out to a company, we talk to them about, for about an hour and just uh, kind of get a health assessment, see if there's anything we can do uh, regarding incentives, stuff like that. Strategic vision, we try to provide a little bit of the, 
unity with all the jurisdictions and make sure that we're all kind of marching in the same direction. Uh, matchmakers, so say we meet with company A and they produce widgets and company B needs widgets, we can go ahead and make that natural synergy happen. And then incentives, if a company is looking to expand or relocate into Green County, we can go ahead and help with that through this next slide. So uh, our three primary incentives that we have are EDIP grants, so it's a business grant basically, it's cash money up front. We do have clawbacks. If a, if a business fails to hit their targets, we'll go ahead and initiate and get that money back with interest. Um, we have a port authority for very big projects. We can do sales tax abatements for construction uh, equipment, things of that nature. And then we have community investment grants, which is a grant available to the jurisdictions uh, to go ahead and do like infrastructure improvements or main streets uh, projects, stuff of that nature. So here's a few projects that are uh, going on in Beaver Creek. I'm sure most of you heard of the, the GE project. That was kind of a dream project. There was a lot of competition for that. Um, that was the first major project that we were able to land in my tenure. I'm very, very happy. To, and actually, I don't think there was any major incentives that were offered. We were able to just do it through relationships, being very timely and responsive. Uh, everyone else wanted it. We got it. So I think it's a 53 acre uh, project, hundreds of jobs. Uh, it's, it's a really big win for the area and it's gonna be in Beaver Creek. So that's something to be proud of. Uh, as Commissioner Gould said, uh, broadband. Uh, I will say the reason that we're getting this done relatively quicker than anyone else is because we've been doing this. So we've been trying to get uh, this project underway for years. We've hit a, a number of snags and I'll give uh, Commissioner Gould uh, credit that uh, we didn't really get any traction until he came on board the project. And uh, it just so happened that the ARPA money came on board right when we needed it and we were ready to take advantage of it. So it's kind of a perfect storm. One, one, thing, one thing I forgot to mention on the, uh, the broadband, as part of our RFP, uh, they, it's not covered under anything we're paying for because that's not legal, but they are going to run backbone to uh, Cedarville, Jamestown, and Xenia. And as they do, as they, after they run the background, they're going to build out from those areas and will pick up an additional 30,000 homes in those jurisdictions. And then when I talk about the backfill, because they're running from the Dayton area out, then they will come back and they will build out uh, generically or whatever, just in the Beaver Creek, Bellbrook, et cetera, other areas. So uh, before long, they hope to have uh, all of Green County uh, wired, wired for fiber to the board. Yeah, it's, it's a great project. It's uh, kind of the first of its kind in the state from what I've been led to believe. Uh, so we're very, very proud of it. Um, it's gonna be, a, I mean, it affects everything. Economic development, healthcare, education, recreation, you name it. So, um, and then lastly, well, to. Uh, so the airport uh, just announced a big deal with Mac Air and Sinclair. So they're going to do a new training program out the airport. A lot more foot traffic coming in through Beaver Creek. Uh, it, a lot of students being able to be helped through this. It's good career uh, sort of education uh, engine. So we're really proud of that. And then lastly, the state announced some uh, brownfield and demolition uh, program funding. So we're going to hopefully be knocking down some blighted buildings here in the not too far distant future. So we're really happy with that and may be able to remediate uh, some brownfield. So brownfield is uh, a space where there was formerly some sort of uh, operation, some sort of business that left contaminants in the ground. And basically while those contaminants exist, we can't put anything else in its place. So what this money is going to allow us to do is get rid of those contaminants so we can go ahead and develop that uh, those properties. So it's a pretty big deal. Uh, it's coming from the state and we're pretty happy about that. So um, I think that's all I have. So I have time for questions. So you spoke about Brownfield and we just more So with Beaver Creek came up with the, was it a tire factory? What kind of fire? It's a barrel factory. Barrel factory. factory. And that, that's still contaminated. That might be beyond brownfield too. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It, 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 it potentially could be available for remediation. Yeah. Where Where is brownfield? The, the, just anywhere that there was a, a building that uh, well, has this is a generic term. Just a generic term. Bad, it's not bad. Bad dirt. Bad dirt. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> you can't need to change. Okay. Yeah, it was a place. Bad, bad dirt. I'm going to have that on all my slides. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I already had that. We had a we bought a gas station to put the pizza store on it, and we discovered contamination. Oh. We put it in a new company called Bad Dirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I have a question on the, on the broadband. Mm -hmm. I live up behind the high school here at Beaver Creek, and AT and T has been coming around digging up everybody's yard and, and putting in uh, cable. Mm -hmm. Uh, supposedly high speed broadband cable. Yeah. Are those two tied together? No. Nope. Well, so they're not officially tied together, but I'll say one of the positive benefits of our project is that uh, capitalism is great. And so everyone else is afraid of losing their shares in the market. So they're, they're all kind of working at warp speed to get you internet as well. So you're going to have a variety of options out in Beaver Creek and everyone's trying to fight for your business. So it's not a bad problem to have. So can you have one of those bat phones end up here so that we can get better Zoom connections? For our <laughs> I wouldn't want them to hear my jokes in real time. So. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Beaver Creek can put in for some uh, of those that infrastructure stuff. And we can run a, a broadband out here to the golf course. For you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. One thing you did not have on your charts that you should uh -oh. be bragging about is a career center over here oh, in, yeah. in Zania. That is the most advanced operation like that I've ever seen. Yeah, you did it right for the county or whoever put it in because they want to pop and ask the business what do you need as opposed to building the thing and say here it is they say we don't need carpenters and yeah that, that actually you know i'd love to take credit for that but that was dave deskin's vision and his his uh board so again yeah. one of the things that i've learned uh in my elected office years is just because it has green county's name on it uh, Probably 90% of that we have no control or oversight on. Oh, don't be so modest. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Dave is a great guy. He does give personal tours. So if you guys want to, if you haven't been out there yet, uh, I recommend it. It's huge. So put on some walking shoes, a couple miles. So And along those, actually, one of the, the old career center, uh, the folks that thought that there are three, three uh, contractors, one's HVAC, one is electrical, and I think the other does uh, carpentry and, and, and other stuff. Uh, they are using that facility, and it's still in the, it's one of the grants that's been requested from us. They are taking that facility to use for recovering uh, drug addicts, and they are teaching them marketable skills where they can they, it's residential. They can live there, wow. stay clean, learn a trade, and after they get to a certain level in their in their skill set. They can actually work for these companies while they're continue to you know school in the morning and work in the evening or whatever and uh, so that's called the emerge center and that's a, a really great concept these guys um, really have a vision and, and they're they're doing a great uh, i think a great service because that's one of the gaps that's missing but when people get out of jail that second step so they'll be able to get jobs making you know 70 to a hundred thousand dollars if they if they're able to go through the training and stay clean. Well, well. Any other questions? Well, thank you for allowing me to come to your club today, and I don't know who to hand this off to. I just want to give some more kudos to uh, Eric. Besides what he does for us at the county, he is also a senior master sergeant, or just a master, just a master sergeant. Just a master sergeant at the 445th and he is the ops first sergeant. So he's serving his country there and, and does a great job there too. Thank you. Very much. All right, per tradition, we have a book here for you that is, we're gonna have you sign that can be uh, donated to the Green County Library. Uh, it is called The Misadventures of Max Crumley. Masters of mischief. So <laughs> I'm not saying there's a correlation, but she does she does pick this up ahead of time. Uh, anything else for the good of the club? All right, let's stand for the pledge. Would you like please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Republic, which stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah.
Huh? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hot to do. Yeah. If you want, I'll see it up here once it's time. I'll have to leave it on. Oh, Alex. Hey, Brandon. How you doing? How you feeling, buddy? Not bad. Not bad. I'm feeling better. You look Glad good. Thank, like you, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'll be in next week. I look forward to seeing huh? you guys. I said I'll be in next week. I look forward to seeing you guys. So. Should I kill it? Uh, no, I know. Should I kill it? Yeah.